Good morning uh, to everybody around the world from sunny California. With me is Donna Raldi. Our, uh, I'm Nicholas Kimler. I'm the CEO of Pipeliner Sales Corporation and Don is the EVP. Our, our finally, son came to California after half a year. Not a brain, but it was our, just a our very our interesting time the last couple of months. Okay, we are jumping right into this topic. We have exactly 25 minutes to get your attention, not too long, so that you get a lot uh, on information. We are starting uh, right what we do with AI. Uh, we have created the Pipeline of CM Voyager. Uh, you can also follow that in the future on the website. We have created a beautiful uh, uh, also ebook that you can download uh, from the website. And as you can see, Pipeliner is on AI since a very long time. We have not started that right now a couple months ago or a year ago. No, we were first to the market with AI for mobile because we believed uh, that the mobile application is extremely important uh, to cover. In this session, we will show you our not only websites, we show you live stuff. Our, we will go into the details about everything, what we do and what is coming next. Because important is um, what we want to create, especially with our Voyager program, is a value to our customers. Uh, AI needs to be implemented with a value. Um, we also want to be sure that everything is always 100% secure. Um, therefore, we implementing only AI solutions that they are basically supported by Amazon because we are on the Amazon cloud. As some of you guys know, we have uh, multiple data centers around the world. We are um, in Sydney, we are in Europe, in Frankfurt, we are in Canada, we are in, and in the US, in Virginia. Um, and definitely we experimenting everything before in Ireland, in Dublin, in our staging environment, all of that supported by Amazon. Uh, why? Because Amazon has the highest security is the market leader in our AI today. Uh, more AI solutions are used by Amazon than in any other, um, vendor around the world. And we feel, uh, it is important that everything is safe. Uh, so let's jump into that right now. What we have released are a couple years ago, uh, because we felt on the mobile, it would be important to give the mobile user already some AI features, uh, where you can see some logical stuff are, uh, and I ask our uh, Don that he will share that right now with me. Uh, so I'm stopping sharing right now and our, um, Don will start sharing our, his mobile application so that you can see live what we have done on the AI side with mobile in the year 2019 already, where we started. Uh, we're definitely constantly improving it. Okay, the phone screen should be coming up just in a moment. Here we go. Yes, wonderful. I can see it, yeah. So here's an example of Voyager on the mobile app. Voyager here is analyzing progress, success, comparison between sales team members, what kind of performance we've had over time. I can adjust my time frame for analysis very quickly. And I can do this in any entity in Pipeliner. I can do it whether I'm looking at opportunities or perhaps I switch and go look at, say, uh, leads and I want to take a look at the Voyager, which is this button down here in the middle on leads. And then I get that same sort of analysis uh, performed on leads. And so here you can see now we're in the leads section looking at the current month, June, and an analysis here done for me. And so this is all at the touch of a button. It's on any entity in Pipeliner and done right on the mobile phone. This has been around for years, long before any other CRM company started talking about doing AI with CRM. As, as you can see, guys, uh, we have tried with the Voyager program, uh, maybe some of you guys remember the Voyager, there's Voyager 1 and Voyager 2. 
are they are right now in interstellar already are signals some are interesting stuff well we haven't found any other life so far yeah are uh, where basically our everything is out there uh but uh voyager is basically our approach and what does that mean it's a, our assistant we believe or especially for the ai in the future that our everything what we want to do uh, and I'm going back uh, to my screen and sharing here to uh, our AI assistant. And our, our approach with Voyager is that we bring an assistant to the sales people, to the sales management, uh, to the seaboard, or to everybody in the company to help to make better decisions in the future. And uh, it is about Pipeliner that we bring always this value or uh, actually that helps you in your real life situation. Because you see, there is so much out there. It's a hype, it's nice maybe, but it doesn't apply or it, you cannot use that in, in, a, in a daily situation. Therefore, we brought a year ago the first really AI assistant. We were that fast and we implement it. Why we can do that? First of all, we can do that because our whole infrastructure is built of components with the latest technology. And compared to our competitors, we have the option and we do that, that we can implement everything very fast into a pipeliner. We did that uh, with the email AI assistant. And uh, again, I want to ask our uh, Dom that he shows us right now how this e uh, AI um, email assistant works. So let me go back and our uh, Don, uh, please, can you share that in detail a little bit of the you whole bet. spectrum, what you can really do today? Yeah, and there's a lot to show. So I'll go through this as quickly as I can. So we're looking at an opportunity right now. And let's say that I wanted to send an email to Patrick, my primary contact at this opportunity. All I have to do is open the email uh, interface for Pipeliner. And this is integrated right into your Outlook or your Gmail. But here, there's a couple of things that I can do. Number one, I can ask the AI to write my email, okay? And so I go right to the AI and I have some options here, like choosing the length of the message, choosing the tone of voice of the message. And if you've played with any of these sorts of tools before, you know you need to give the system a prompt. What do you want to write about? And then ask it to generate your email. And it's that simple. It's going to write my email for me. And then I can insert that right into the email and I'm done. However, even though it's written the email, I'm free to come in here and edit this any way I want to. Sometimes you might come in. I find that when I choose the professional tone of voice, it might sound a little robotic and automated. So sometimes I highlight that text and I can go right back into the AI and ask it to rephrase it. I can ask it to make a text correction. Maybe I think it's too long and I want to make it shorter or vice versa. I could even change the tone of voice. So now instead of professional, I could change this to casual and have it rewrite the email for me. And so that's all very simple and easy to use in Pipeliner, but you can do a couple of other things using the same tool set. If we delete that email and we start from scratch, it could be that I don't wanna type the email at all. Now this first part is not AI, but it's simply recording a message. So it's transcribing my voice to text. I'll do a short one here. Here's an example of Don talking to the computer. You can see my hands waving in the air if my picture's still up on the screen. So you know that I'm not actually typing. So I can very easily just talk to the computer, have it write my email. And then again, I can highlight it because sometimes they don't necessarily speak in good grammar or sentence structure. I can ask it to rephrase make a text correction, make it shorter, make it longer. All those options are again available to me after I have transcribed. Okay, so these are all examples of, of a, a really useful and yet fairly simple interface to AI to help me write my emails. But I wanna show you one more example here while we're in this file. 
I'm going to come down here to this description box. Or you know what? Let's do something else. We'll go to um, notes and say I want to add a new note to this file. I just had a meeting with the people at Sharp Hospital here in San Diego. When I say create new, I can do the same thing that I saw in email. I can record notes from my meeting. So I'll make up a short little summary here real quick so you can see how this works. I just had a great meeting with the team at Sharp. They're very interested in implementing their very first CRM. They've never had one before. They loved our interface. They love our automation tools, and they're really excited about the email sequencing tool. They are going to need some integration into their ERP system. So I just spoke those notes, but now I can highlight that and ask the AI to simply take that information, summarize it into bullet points for me. And I can even, after I've done that, uh, create new action items that I want to follow up on. But you can see bullet points done for me, save it. And now it's asked me if I'd like to create a new task associated with that. We can jump right in and create a new task. So those are the features of AI that we find to be very practical and very useful for the end user on a daily basis, right? We try to avoid those things that are kind of shiny objects and, and try to focus on those things that really bring real value to the end user. I think that is fantastic, Don, because our, even for me, this is perfect in my broken English. It's translating everything, text correcting, making the bullet points, or uh, gives me some task or immediately that I can share with some other people. You know, when you have meetings, um, typing for salespeople, as we know, typing is terrible after a meeting. If you just talk to the computer and then the voice is recorded and immediately transferred and uh, text corrected and then even gives me some action items, what else you can um, expect from a good meeting after that and easy to do that. Fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah. Okay, um, I want immediately to show you a little bit even more uh, where we are going uh, because we are not stopping there. Uh, what is coming? Uh, we are working right now already on some new stuff. Uh, keep in mind, in the future, we have, as no other vendor in the world, in our space, really programming like crazy. In the last year is what we have done, and we will not stop. No, we are beginning. Yeah. Uh, and one of the things that we do right now is that every release um, from July on will be uh, uh, with AI features. We are bringing every release a little bit uh, with AI. And uh, the AI, what we bring uh, is basically something that we try um, uh, to give you, as we did before with the assistance, a real value. This will be uh, the sentiment that is coming uh, and keep out uh, for watching really what will be uh, very fantastic in the area of the navigator. And uh, we are so excited about the things that are coming uh, because it's amazing. Uh, I want quickly, I hope it works, to show you something uh, uh, on the AI side. I hope this site will be available give me a second i have to stop sharing and share again or to go to a different site i share my screen again and uh we are speaking about uh the most important part before you are basically speak about data um because ai is built on data we brought the basis of all of that. And this is our, a new system that also no vendor in the world right now has in this form of complexity. We brought out the duplication checker. And I want that uh, Don again shows right now what we have done so that the AI can uh, basically in the future give you insights into your own data. Therefore, you have to clean your data. And I'm stop sharing and we go right now to the duplication checker and show what the duplication checker can do for you. Okay, so we're back in Pipeliner here and I'm gonna go to our tools menu and go to the duplicate checker. 
And you can see what this interface is doing for you and this tool does for you is you can look at various entities in your system. This, these would be leads, opportunities, accounts, contacts, et cetera. And here's a good example under contacts. It's telling me I have several duplicates in the system. And so the question is, what do we want to do about these, right? As Nicholas said, if you want AI to function well for you, you can't have, for example, three different Nicholas Kimlas in the system. If they all happen to be the same person, we're not going to get the right result out of AI that we're looking for, right? So in this case, I know that Nicholas is the same person, even though I have a couple of different phone numbers, I see the same email address on each one of these. And it's very simple for me to simply say, hey, I would like to merge these three data points, these three di different Nicholas Gimlos. And I can see all the details in their files so that I can very easily choose which is the master. And once I've selected the master, then I can merge all three of these together. Right? And it will merge those for me. It's that simple. And so by cleaning up my data, and this is something we do by user, right? Because we have user rights. I don't want sales rep Don doing merging on sales rep Nicholas's uh, information. Nicholas knows those contacts better than I do. They're his accounts, right? So this is by user that we're doing this, okay? And once it's merged those three entities or these three data points, all contacts into one, you can see now those are gone. I no longer have a duplicate under Nicholas, okay? And so this is very easy to use. Nicholas, do you wanna go into the uh, back end and show the settings for this? Yes, that would be fantastic, Derry. If you just go there and show them, uh, because our, we have uh, basically uh, created it in this way that when you, for each entity, uh, we are right now at the contact entity, or I don't know which entity you want to choose. Yeah, uh, contact. contact entity. Uh, as you can see, you have medium, high, exact, and you can bring here up to maximum of ten parameters that you say which fields you want to match. That there are should be high or exact. That means. Uh, when their first name, the last name, the email address, the phone number, the city, whatever you want. And so you can define. And I would suggest, guys, uh, because you see, AI works like this way. In the future, with incorrect data, with incorrect data, you get incorrect results. Uh, uh, especially because our, no company has this massive amount of data that are like are they are being used in OpenAI and other Gemini. Uh? The problem is uh, when you have our, our technology uh, where you are have let's say five different accounts and our AI has not enough data to match these accounts. You need this massive amount of data that we don't have. Therefore, you have to clean your data. And the better you, are, you have clean data, the better the results in the future will be. Um, so that means I would recommend for everyone who's using this feature, start with low with, or, or, and then go to medium and high before you go to exact. So you can clean your database. We have realized, speaking with customers and with people around the world, basically, that a non-company has real clean data. Um, or it's not only the lead data. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, Can you imagine if you would have clean lead data? It's about the opportunities. But um, most companies never, ever have clean data about their accounts and contacts. And that you, know, Nicholas, you know, Nicholas, the other thing yes. to point out here is that if you've ever taken on the project before for a decent sized company of trying to clean a database, you know how time consuming and how, you know, just nerve wracking it is to go through thousands and thousands and thousands of data points and try to clean your data. This tool not only makes it really simple, but it's going to save you so much time in trying to get your data to a clean point. Right. Absolutely. No longer will you have to export all your data to some massive, you know, data sheet and then hire some workers to come in 
and pour through the data looking for duplicates. Of course, they're not familiar with your your prospects and your existing clients. So they're going to make mistakes, not realizing what are actually duplicates and what aren't. But this way we eliminate all that human error and we make it fast and easy for your team to clean the database. Perfect. Um, so let's finishing up our, basically our, I want to share again my screen uh, and go here. Now it should come up. As I said, there is a lot of stuff coming. Our, we have checked right now with the data. Not only that, we want to be assured that everybody is, as we are super excited about the innovation that will come our every release. As you know, we have at least more than 10 releases a year. Uh, what is amazing uh, in that area. Uh, next uh, release is even this week uh, on Thursday. There is tremendous, a lot of stuff coming. Uh, but I want to highlight that with the AI that we want to implement, as I said, in each release in the future, uh, uh, that you can build up uh, and we will definitely communicate a lot about that. But not only that, uh, you need to understand that we have a platform, uh, salespop.net, yeah, um, that you can see on this website right now uh, that we have also experts talking about. So we are not only bringing features, they are very helpful and immediately can be used from the users, from everyone, from the salesperson, from the sales manager, from everyone in the company and brings a value. But we bring you also additional content that is correlated uh, to the AI, as you can see here. And you can listen to that, um, not only from our people are from professor from Harvard's from experts in security and 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 all in these different topics that we want to cover so that you have the best and the latest information at your fingertips. Okay, guys, I think that was our first uh, live session on LinkedIn. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, uh, Don from San Diego and myself from Los Angeles are wishing you a very successful week. Um, a great month and uh, hopefully we see you soon. All the best. Bye.